This is Sam Jones for Ah, uh, you don't care about that. You want to see what graphical and artistic differences between Unity 5 and Unreal Engine 4 are? I get you. So, this video in the Game Devs for Bible series will explore exactly that. I'm sorry, I have to self advertise. So, like my previous debate, this video is going to solely focus on one area of development. Today, that is art and the programming side, etc. Now, obviously, I'm a programmer primarily and up front. So there may be a few things I don't explain or gloss over, but those things can be found in documentation and by trying out the engines. So to find out my thoughts on programming in these two engines, please click the info card that has just appeared and it will take you to the previous video. You'll find the link in the description below, because mobiles. And like that video, we shall split this one into sections. So enough of this intro, let's get started. Materials. So, most game engines and rendering engines these days use something called materials that define how an object, or part of an object at least, should be rendered. It usually consists of at least three inputs, base colour, roughness and metallic. This technique is mainly the only one used in Unreal Engine 4 by default, and Unity's defaults are also set to it as well. This technique is obviously down to PBR, which is the latest and greatest way of rendering items, and it has commonly been used in the past in the industry for quite a while, specifically for visual effects and other such things, but in, game in, in the game industry it has only really just become viable in the past few years that we can do it real time and realistically. The way both engines edit their materials is actually quite different. So Unreal Engine 4 uses a visual scripting system, much like their Blueprint's visual scripting language, to create the materials. This means that new shader types and effects can be made very, very quickly using the material editor and don't have to be scripted, but can look very daunting to new users and requires a lot of playing around with to understand all the nodes and what they do and how you can use them together. Although basic materials that most people will only need are clean and easy to use, and only need to be provided with the correct texture maps generally, the scripting part is going beyond simple rendering and wanting effects such as an animated texture. Visually, the materials begin to look messy in Unreal Engine 4, but the effects that the visual scripting can create are astoundingly powerful and have basically no performance impact against the usual HLSL or other forms of scripting languages that are generally used. This allows artists to create powerful shaders on their own without needing too much technical knowledge, although technical artists' abilities are also enhanced by creating powerful shader presets that can be edited by individual material artists without having to continuously bother the technical ones. Overall performance, teamwork and time is increased, well the time management is increased, not the time takes longer. The materials in Unity work similar to how they and most engines have always handled shaders, to be honest. They have a handful, and Unity actually has a fair big handful, of preset material shaders that you would need. And generally they include every type of material that you would need except specific ones for particle effects, etc. But that's a bit different to be fair. Unreal Engine 4 has translucent shaders and things that you would need for them. But again, you'd have to create your own material to properly display them. And to create new shaders in Unity, you have to create a material script. Once this has been completed, many instances of this new type of material can be created though. So it's a 50-50 of good and bad there. This needs to be done for the changes that you can do in the visual editor of Unreal Engine 4, meaning that technical artists and programmers are needed to be able to create this type of material. However, Unity does have a lot of documentation and tutorials on this subject matter, so all hope is not lost and it is relatively easy to become master of the shader realm. Speaking of shadows, let's talk about lighting and shadows. Lighting in games is a magical thing. It can make the worst looking environments you've ever seen into beautiful pieces of art that you don't even want to look away from. Okay, well maybe lighting isn't that drastic, but knowing how to create good lighting is very important in any game, no matter what look you are going for. Bad lighting is bad lighting. Even a horror game where the only light source is your not so trusty flashlight that needs to light up the environment and you as an artist want to know 
how is the lighting by default? How much do I have to play with it to create a nice looking lit scene? The answer is not much really for both engines. So lighting is probably my weakest point in this description, but obviously it's such a major thing that I can't not mention it. So I'm going to give what I understand of it. So Unreal Engine 4 is very much a AAA engine where features and effects are built in from the start. This means that the lighting by default has things like lens flares, ambient occlusion, glare, bloom, automatic exposure to adjust the light based on where you are looking, things like god rays and much, much more. Things that affect how the scene is lit. This basic inclusion of all features means it's very easy, simple and quick to begin using and creating the best lighting possible for your game. Even things like emission lighting just give off a really nice looking feeling. Something I find Unity to particularly lack in in my personal opinion. But Unity's basic lighting is nice for a basic attempt. However, due to the open-ended nature of Unity, where it provides you the basics and you build everything off it, this means lighting effects such as those previously mentioned are not included by default, although their scripts can be found in the standard assets delivered free by Unity or easily created by a member of the team. This of course means creating gorgeous lighting on par with an engine such as Unreal Engine 4 is a lot more tedious and complicated but it allows you to remain full control over how the effects are made, meaning that you can be improved for optimization, style, and everything else. But of course, you can create these effects yourself in Unreal Engine 4 if you didn't approve or want to use the pre-made ones. I don't normally give my opinions in these discussions, but I personally think UE4 here wins because lighting is so important to the look and feel of any game that, that basic functionality such as bloom and lens glare should be customizable but included by default. Plugins and extensions. What? Plugins and extensions in an art discussion? Those are programmer things. Wrong. So wrong. They are everybody's things. A programmer would not have the foresight to include a substance material plugin if unlike the artist, they had no idea that the team was using that piece of software. And communication is obviously key to this. So plugins and extensions, why are they good for artists? Well, every artist, technical artist and programmer should all know the different formats and software that can be used for asset creation in the games industry. Both engines tend to have the same plugins, which include all the ones most people would ask for, such as Substance or Modo, or links between Maya and Max and the engine, animation tools, things that artists would definitely and desperately want to have. Um, Unreal Engine 4 actually kind of recently in the past few months released a plugin which sort of allows you to do more in-depth animations in the engine itself. Obviously most of the time you don't want to do these animations outside the engine, however having such a plugin is a very powerful feature. So. This was a small section, but I feel like it's still as major as the other two because it means that artists do not need to worry which engine can directly support their software, something that is really big in the industry. Because if your engine for some reason cannot support the software or the file format you are using, then obviously it's obsolete straight away and you're not going to use it because you're not going to learn new software for this engine when there's other choices out there. Okay, so this video was shorter and less in depth than my previous one on programming. But I did start the video by saying that and I hope you did get something out of this and helped influence your decision in some way. Again, I was not trying to influence your decision between Unreal Engine 4 or Unity, I was wanting to leave that up to you, but just give an explanation of some of the powerful features both engines offer and something I think would be very important for artists to know. One last thing is that there is visual scripting included by default in Unreal Engine 4 which is primarily focused on being able to be used by everybody in the team such as artists so that they can have things like torches and lights turn on and off when a player walks by and the programmer doesn't have to program that themselves, the artist can do it using blueprints with very little uh, performance impact. So in conclusion, Unreal Engine 4 can make amazingly realistic looking games and because of that has uses in the visual effects industry and 
it can be used and edited very simply with tons of AAA or higher standard techniques that are included in the box by default. But Unity is a fully customizable sandbox basically and is open-ended for the developers to do with how they want. So if customization is what you're after, then Unity may be your choice. Obviously both engines can do things the other can as well. As you may have seen from the examples in the background, UE4 can actually be really good for low poly cartoony graphics, it just takes a little more work to begin a base for it and find something that works. And whilst Unity can make Unreal Engine 4 level or higher graphics, but again it takes a lot of work to figure out the renderer and work with the material setup. So yeah, both engines are free, so do feel free to check them both out, and I have Unreal Engine 4 tutorials here on my channel. Obviously that shows a bit of the preference to my engine, um, but I tried to make this video as unbiased as possible. So if you like the video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, um, or obviously subscribe if you want to see more from me. You can also follow me on Twitter, which is in the links below, along with my Patreon and my Facebook page, although that is a bit outdated, so you probably won't follow that. So thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.